Hey, what's up, amigos? Today we're going to shoot a Golf JTI. Let's see how it goes. It's a white color. Why do they keep on coming white colors? The color white is a bit challenging in comparison to other colors. It's just hard to get the shadows and the highlights right. So today we're going to shoot using the Sony A7R2 plus we're going to use the Pro Photo. You see this? <laughs> That's kind of my store. Today we're going to use the Pro Photo B1. There it is. This guy over here yields about 500 watts. Yeah, pretty powerful. Alongside with it, we're going to use the 1x4 strip box modifier. I hope it's. Yeah, it's intact. Good. So, this is the setup right now. We have the Proto B1 on a Monproto light stand which I'll be uh, actually battling with I'll show you how in a bit this is the car we're going to take multiple shots so few of the front one with the light brakes at the back of tail lights and then maybe one with the daylight on <laughs> all right so this is a very well not very but it's a, a heavy setup and um, one of the reasons why I'm not using the 1x6 uh, strip box is just to try to control the weight and as you can see in trying to take different shots from different distances of off the car itself since I don't really have something or a reference of which I'm looking at at what I'm shooting so I take multiple shots just trying to get the right angle somewhere in the middle um, trying to position that strip box without me appearing in the picture all right so now that we're done shooting I imported everything into Adobe Lightroom and I went ahead and you know scanned through the um, shots. Now some of them were underexposed, some of them were okay. Um, that's why you should do a tethered shooting in which you have a laptop. All the photos sort of you know gets tethered to your favorite application, whether it's Lightroom or Capture One, and that way you can monitor what's coming in. And you can adjust accordingly but it was a uh, very hard to do it with only sort of one or two people anyway um, looking at, at it through the camera was also hard and the monitor is just you know the LCD screen is just too small to to measure and it's usually brighter than what it appears to be anyway so I scanned through the shots and I selected few now let me show you what I've selected. This is going to be the base exposure. I adjusted um, some of the settings here, like the exposure, because it was I felt it was a bit underexposed. I raised a bit of the shadows, and that's about it. So this is the before, and this is the after. And why I selected this as a base shot is because I like how the light is spreading evenly so I have this over here which I kind of like I got a bit of the sides as well but this might we might paint in from a different shot but I like the way the light is spread evenly although we have a dark area here which is fine I mean we can always copy this area and then apply it here um, this area might remain a bit dark which is again it's okay I'm not quite sure if I shot another, like a very good shot of the logo or the emblem. Um, so we'll we'll see that later on. I think this is what I have so far. 
All right, moving onwards, I um, had like, you know, I, I shot like side shots to light up the sides of the car. We might be using them, but not necessarily. And that's me setting up lights. Duh. All right, so we're going to use this as, you know, um, as the second layer in which we will have the brake lights at the back. So this was shot with 0.8 second. And it was so hard to get <laughs> that. Um, the problem was is we couldn't hit the brakes unless the car was switched on. If you switch or turn the car on, then you, by default, the, the lights trigger gets turned on as well. So we'll see how we can maneuver this in Photoshop. All right, so let's get started. Uh, this is the base shot, or I'm going to start with these two. So select both, right click, and edit in as layer open, as layers in Photoshop. All right, so let's have a look at it. I don't think that's properly aligned when I I think my uh, my cousin there at the camera a bit I mean It's so hard to tell because of the exposure, but what we're going to do is just Work with it anyway, so I'm going to just arrange this and looking at that back the opacity all right so we'll start brushing in the details down from the upper part and see how we roll add a mask inverter invert it and uh, select the brush um, it must be a white brush, 70% is fine for now, let's see. And uh, I'm going to start adding in the reds. Well, it's not bad, huh? I'm going to decrease furthermore. Maybe a bit of the opacity as well. I'm going just to brush downwards. It's just so it blends. Oh. That's kind of easy, right? Alright, so let's solve this problem. So we have the headlight here, which is kind of visible, uh, see we painted in a bit of the, remember the issue with the headlights, let's just paint that back, we can't do it 100%, but let's try and adjust it. properly led here and that's good all right so back to this now what I'm gonna do is just copy this and then flip it so let's do that um, select press M I might just start with the mm, and then we'll adjust it accordingly so we'll paint in what we want to paint and then brush out what we just don't want to appear. Control J, I'm gonna move it. And then Control T transform, flip horizontally. And let's try and align it. Alright. 
can see these lines here. Let's try and align them. You know what we should use here, right? The pen tool. So let's do that. Make selection. All right, and brush. X and these. We need these, so let's brush them in. Now I'm going to select and inverse the selection and brush black color and let's fix this. And I can see, see a bit of halo effect down here. And that's because the original picture image is not properly aligned in any way. Let's deselect. Let's see if we can Yeah. That's kind of fine down there. So let's look at the lights before and after oh, we missed part here, let's just brush it away. And there you go. We have it. Now we can do a dodge and burn. Let's do that as well. And um, select all. Let's fill this layer with 50% gray and uh, set the blending mode to overlay. Let's take a brush. Alright. I think I'm gonna start with the blacks. The flow at three percent, and let's just start brushing it. How cool is that? Of course you can again se select the pen tool down here, just so you don't go over the highlights, the places that you'd like to keep the highlights. Let me adjust you, my friend. Okay, carrying on. Down here. Just subtle. Well, sort of subtle. Alright, highlights. A bit of details down here. I mean, you can zoom in. Let's 
the reflection of the flash. We can definitely paint in the other exposure in which we only have these lead. But I kind of like it this way. That's something that you should experiment with. Alright, let's do a bit of color toning since everyone would like me to use Photoshop for color toning. It's easy. Um, we'll use the curves in this example and we'll set the blending mode to color and then we'll start with, start with the reds. We'll add a bit of green to the shadows just a bit and I'm just gonna keep that a bit with reds and the highlights moving on to the blue going to do quite the opposite and actually going to add blues in the shadow we're in the shadows. There may be I mean I can add the yellows to the highlights, but I don't like it that much. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the it's the car's color which doesn't fit the yellow. And again this is very subjective. See about the greens and the mid tones. Mm. No, I'm just gonna keep it as it is. See the before and after. Just before that, let's add a channel mixer. Let's try to desaturate first. I think it's just full of colors there. And we forgot to add contrast as well. Let's do a channel mixer. And uh, start with the blue. Okay, just about there. And let's see the red. No, the red will ruin the image. Orange. I mean, you can adjust these sliders accordingly, but I'm just gonna stick with the default. Just add a bit of contrast here. And filter. I'll use the Nick collection Color Effects Pro. I have a video that explains that as well. Tonal contrast. And that's not too much. Let's desaturate. Yes. Okay, have it. And then I am by it. Somewhere around there is good. And I'm gonna click OK. All 
All right, there you have it. Let's just decrease that. I think it's a bit too much. Say about 61% is fine. Let's add a bit of sharpness. All right, it's time to add a bit of sharpening and I'm going just to zoom in for the preview. This time I'm going to use the unsharpened mask or unsharp mask. I think it's okay. This is what I've previously used. So an amount of 83%, so for, and radius about 2.9, threshold is 5. I'm gonna leave a link to a tutorial about the unsharp mask and how to use it properly. So if you would know what each one of them does. For now, I'm gonna click OK. I can do it selectively. Let's see. I just kind of looks okay. I don't usually sharpen these areas. Let's begin off which just had a mask. Inverted brush. Increase. Now I'm gonna add the channel mixer that we created earlier and I'll apply the toning. I think the toning is just too much. And to grease even the channel mixer. Let's put that down a bit. About 10-9% is fine. Alright, we're done. I mean, you can take it to Lightroom and, you know, do the final touches like I do. If you want to add sort of vignettes, you can do it here as well. Let's, let me show you one way. I'll use it. I'll use curves for this. And I'll just do that. And now I have a mask. Capacity of 15% black brush and Photoshop is about to crash There you go. Let's see the before and after. Before and after, just settle. And that's it, amigos. I hope this was helpful as usual. Sorry about all the interruption. My family is waiting for me to go and have lunch with them. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Please leave them in the comment section below. Until the next video, amigos. See ya.